So this is our wine timeline for our trip through Northern Virginia. We went to six different wineries and this was the booty that we got. We bought a lot of wine, but it was all like once in a lifetime stuff because I don't think we're going back into that area anytime soon. So probably the highlight of the trip was Nota Viva. And Nota Viva was featured on uh, Dream House on DIY as they built their big timber frame uh, house, the house, their tasting room, and their family. And so we met a really nice man who took the time to go through the tasting and really tell us about the wines and, and what they do. Um, and they're a little different, like their musicians are not really wine. <laughs> they're probably the least wine people of anyone, so they uh, they pair their wines with music. That's what Nota Viva is about. So they pair their wines with music instead of food. And if you look here, it says best paired with Starry Nights, Bonfires, and Fast Gypsy Music. So that was cool. That was Nota Viva. Then we went to Hillsboro. Hillsboro was kind of cool because they did their sitting, their or their 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 tasting was seated, like a, like a restaurant style, and then they came around and would pour uh, four different flights, so two two wines at a time, that were similar, uh, and there were four different rounds of it. And in th this one, we had only bought the Moonstone, was the one that we liked. They uh, the they might have been the most beautiful, of all of them with the with the grounds that they had. But uh, uh, their wines were more an assault on the senses. This was the only one that was kind of sweet. And Dukeney was actually the one where someone who really knew wine took the time to, talk, to teach us a little bit about how different processes and growing the grapes and different soil and uh, different amounts of sunlight can affect the final product. Uh, and uh, they're also like a, a teaching campus for one of the local universities that uh, uh, that has a winemaking course. Uh, Dukeney is sort of their like learning lab. Uh, so they make some very basic uh, wines, although they had a very cool raspberry wine. Yep, they had a very cool raspberry wine. And they gave us a some homemade baklava because we bought this, and that was Hope's Hope's Legacy was her her wine and her baklava. So when we bought a bottle, they were like, "Oh, well, here's some baklava that, that we got to eat on the way, uh, right on the uh, on the spot." And the Zeus, the Zeus we actually bought because we thought uh, Donna would like it. I don't remember what made us think that <laughs> think that, but uh, but we did, and so we bought it. And then we stopped at a little organic market where I bought some uh, lemon zucchini bread. And some, we bought some uh, Gouda cheese also that we munched on the rest of the day. <laughs> then we went to Loundon, uh, Loundon Valley Vineyards, where uh, we were the only ones there. It was, I think it was the only one where we didn't see another human being at the, at the winery. We got the Route 9 Red which was uh, sort of an interesting, not as uh, dry red wine, I thought, like a red wine that I could get behind, because as we all know, I, I'm nothing but a sweet head. And then we also got one of what they called classic white, and it was uh, probably the sweetest white wine that we, that we saw in all of Virginia, because most of the wines in Virginia were not very sweet. They were uh, far more dry and peppery overall than a lot of the other uh, areas we've gone to wineries. And then we went to the one that we thought was going to be our favorite. <laughs> that was Sunset Hills. Uh, and Sunset Hills had some interesting wines. They had, they, had, they had live music going when we were there. We sat on the uh, on their deck and ordered a basket of crackers and cheese that was very nice. Uh, but uh, it was it struck us as a 
It was the biggest of them. They had the most formal tasting. He walked in and paid right up front at a register to go back to the bar and, and do a tasting. And there were like uh, 50 people there doing tastings. And there were like five or six people walking them through. The bar was huge. The place was huge. It was sort of like uh, the big business winery as opposed to uh, some of the more charming ones we'd been to. Although based on the uh, reviews online of wineries, this is the one I expected to have the, uh, the most knowledgeable staff who would recommend other wineries, uh, but that wasn't our experience. In fact, Dukeney was the one where we learned the most with the most knowledgeable staff and had the most intimate experience where they actually recommended that we try out the Village Winery, which was a little bit off the beaten path and wasn't in our original plan, but we added it to the stop based on her recommendation and the village winery was this was the smallest uh winery we were at it was basically like a room off the side of a dude's house his tasting bar was like two crates with it with with a plywood top and uh it sure looked like he's the only one who ever works there and he made he was the only one that made like other fruit wines like this apple wine that we really enjoyed and elderberry wine is what the elderberry wine is what he's really known for and uh, uh, they also do this sparkling elderberry beverage, which is non-alcoholic. However, what he did was he poured the sparkling beverage and then added the apple wine to it. And that was really quite good. And that's why if we had gone all the way to the village winery, we were going to get uh, elderberry wine, because uh, that's what the, what the deal is. But this apple plus the non-alcoholic kind of had to be done after we tasted it. And it's kind of funny because... I think you could see who we enjoyed. We enjoyed our time here. We bought three bottles from him, two from everyone else except for Hillsboro, where they were kind of snooty, and they were Redskins fans. And then we got to our hotel where I had pre-ordered champagne and chocolate strawberries to be in the room, but when we checked in, even though I paid an exorbitant extra fee for the room for that, there was no champagne and no shot strawberries. So I call, so we stopped by the front desk and I asked, and they were like, oh, we're so sorry, we'll, we'll get that for you. And so we went out to get something to eat, and when we came back, still no champagne or strawberries. So I called the front desk, and I'm sort of like, hi, it's, it's still me. It's, you know, uh, I had ordered these things to be here at 5 o'clock. It is now like 9.30, uh, seriously. And they're like, we'll be right up with it. So we waited like an hour and gave up and just on our way out because we wanted to go down to the to the National Mall, we said, look, just if they even get it together, put it in our room. Otherwise, you know, take it off our bill. And when we came back, some of the worst chocolate strawberries ever were in our room. Um, seriously, they were made by a five-year-old, like at the last second. It was like a school project that didn't, uh, uh, that didn't come together after an all-nighter. Uh, but they had told me that they would comp it. Well, they couldn't comp it because it was built into our room rate. So instead what they did was they gave us an extra bottle of champagne. So we killed most of one bottle of champagne and saved some and had mimosas in the morning with the room service breakfast we had set up, which also was very late and uh, was good, but was kind of obnoxious. Uh, but this was this is our extra bottle of champagne that we got from the hotel. So that is our that was our Virginia wine tour.